Welcome to this uh, webinar for applications. Uh, we'll start right off. We have a few participants who have joined, and we're hoping to have a few more joining in shortly. Um, we have one hour with us uh, for this webinar. Um, this is on the call for applications on catalyzing equitable use of artificial intelligence to improve, to improve, to improve global health. Um, and with me, we have um, our head of programs at Science for Africa, uh, Dr. Moses Alobo. Um, my name is Doris Wangari. I serve as a senior program officer at the Science for Africa Foundation. I'd like to introduce to you Dr. Moses Alobo, the head of programs at Science for Africa, um, who leads the Science Innovation Translation and Entrepreneurship Program. Um, he'll first to give a few remarks um, introducing the organization as well as some of the partners that we have for this joint area. Thank you so much and uh, good morning, good afternoon and good evening colleagues. Um, my task is to introduce the Science for Africa Foundation to you and the partners that are supporting this particular call before I hand it over to my colleagues to describe exactly what is uh, of specific interest uh, to you. And um, therefore, I'll just take a few minutes. So the Science for Africa Foundation is a Pan-African non-profit public charitable organization that was created to support, strengthen, and promote science and innovation on the African continent. And uh, our vision is actually to be a leader for strengthening African science for a better future in a global world. That's uh, what we are all about. And uh, we actually do this by uh, doing work in uh, discovery sciences, translational sciences, and also implementation sciences. But the thematic areas that are of interest to us are health, climate and environment, and also agriculture. This specific call, of course, uh, you'll be hearing the details about it. Uh, you'll make a judgment where it, it actually uh, falls. As an organization, we are usually interested not just in the innovations and the, uh, you know, innovators, but we are usually <clears throat> do quite a bit of work around capacity building. Uh, so we are interested in building the people, making sure that there is deep expertise in all areas of science that we work in and then also making sure that the places that our projects are running are also as much as possible suited for the science for which we would like them to be delivered. We make sure that uh, we support policies that work, uh, policies that are supportive of science on the African continent to the extent that we are able to build products. And indeed, uh, when we were having this particular discussion with our partners, the Patrick J. McGovern Foundation and also the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, uh, we did have quite a bit of discussion around which kind of products are going to be coming out of um, this piece of work uh, that we have interest in. And of course, for us, we also have um, uh, interesting partnerships. Uh, partnerships are important. We think that if um, you know you have to build science on the continent, uh, we, of course, uh, you can be a brilliant single scientist, uh, but you can be even better when you are in a partnership. So um, there are many programs uh, or groups within the Science for Africa Foundation. I will not go through all of them, but just mention that this piece of work. Uh, that we are doing in partnership with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and also Patrick J. McGovern Foundation is being done under the Science Innovation Translation and Entrepreneurship Group within Science for Africa Foundation. And I'm sure many of you may have heard of other groups. I would encourage you to go onto our website and have a look and see you know, other uh, programs that we do. Um, we believe that um, as of now, we support approximately 3,500 to 4,000 scientists on the African continent. So there are many 
and there's quite a bit to learn from our website. Otherwise, uh, thank you very much. I'll hand you back to Doris. Thank you very much, Moses, for those remarks. Um, indeed, I want to give a brief uh, background of the program that we have set ahead of us. We have set one hour for this webinar. I will run through some slides to, to guide us on what the request for proposals uh, looks like in terms of eligibility and evaluation and what we'll be looking for uh, administratively after which um, we'll then open it up for about 40 minutes of Q&A. Um, within the, the, the screens, you can see that there's a chat box. Please try and ask some of your questions there. Um, there's a team behind, that, behind the scenes that will be trying to address some of those questions. Additionally, uh, uh, during the Q&A, uh, if you still have a question, we'll ask you to unmute to raise your hand and mute, and then you can ask your question as well. Um, this uh, webinar is also being recorded, so we'll, hope, we'll be looking forward to sharing it with you uh, through the web page where the call was announced. Um, thank you very much. So without further ado, allow me to delve in into the presentation. Artificial intelligence has a significant potential to transform healthcare within the world, and I think for many of us, uh, we are seeing um, artificial intelligence as a, as a new buzzword that everyone is using. And it has uh, potential, as they say, to revolutionize uh, a lot of the uh, sectors that we have. So for us, we are looking uh, through this call to uh, emphasize on AI solutions in global health that would be locally driven and owned to ensure that they indeed meet the needs of the people that they serve and also for acceptability by the local communities. Um, when we launched this uh, joint global call, um, we were all very keen to ensure that there will be responsible global use of AI, which entails safe, equitable, transparent, reliable and beneficial processes. Um, additionally, as the world continues to rapidly move uh, to seize the AI opportunities, uh, we believe that it is imperative that we all monitor and mitigate the safety um, as well as the ethical, equity and reliability dimensions of AI deployment. Um, as mentioned by Moses, uh, this is a joint call um, by various Grand Challenges partners uh, we have six Grand Challenges partners from GC Brazil, GC Ethiopia, GC India, GC Senegal, and GC South Africa. Um, each of these countries have launched individual calls as well. And also uh, now for us, GC Africa, which is, uh, takes up a more of a pan-African approach uh, for this call. Um, we are partnering with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, as well as the Patrick uh, J. McGovern Foundation, uh, as well as the Pasture Network uh, for this. And we've included a link that you can find some of the highlights of this announcement that, that um, has been made. Um, for GC Africa, um, we launched the, the announcement uh, 9th of October. Uh, and we are hoping that it will be open for a period of four weeks. And this is due to the fast moving uh, aspect of AI. So we are, we, we've opened it for four weeks and we'll be closing in two weeks time um, for this application. So kindly note the deadline for submissions. Essentially, the challenge that we're looking at is uh, innovative approaches as entails to the use of large language models. Some of them are chat GPT uh, model four, as well as other credible sources uh, of equivalent capability. And we are very keen to ensure that we, since there are many aspects of AI tools that are out there, open and non-open source, we encourage and expect that the various applicants uh, would select a tool that is most appropriate to their use uh, in the case that they will be presenting and also in their context. The various areas of focus of this RFP are four, five, 
The first one is uh, tools that would uh, enable in the solving of uh, clinical decision support. So we're looking for tools that can be used by frontline health workers in improving diagnosis. We're also looking at tools that can support when it comes to refinement and adherence of health guidelines. We are looking for tools that would be used when it comes to interpretation of some of these uh, diagnostics, ensuring that there is a reduction in costs and overcoming uh, some of the barriers that we have seen with previous diagnostics. Uh, the second area of focus is population health and policy making. We are looking to ensure that uh, the tools that uh, innovators will come up with would be used in, in guiding and supporting policymakers to ensure that they leverage on new and timely insights through routinely available, uh, underutilized, and unused data sources, and reduce also the time delays, especially when it comes to transitioning and, and utilization of policy, as well as implementation. We are looking for approaches that can distill information and make timely recommendation from complex evolving data sets, um, such as forecasting when it comes to disease epidemics and progression. The third area of focus, we're looking for support when it comes to frontline health workers. Again, we're looking for personalized coaching uh, that is tailored and highly relevant uh, that would lead to improved quality of service that these frontline health workers would, would offer and also reducing uh, the costs. The large language models uh, solutions, we would, we would want to see that they have a workflow management in terms of easing some of the workloads that uh, these workers would, would be doing. The use of the large language models can also be used to support uh, the frontline workers in delivering high quality services and improved efficiency. We're also keen on the area of focus when it comes to communication and patient journeys. We want to ensure that we develop uh, impactful and targeted communication tools that would bridge language and literacy gaps. We have seen AI being used when it comes to translation, especially in the local context of Africans, uh, being tr translated even in local dialects and text to voice uh, aspects. Uh, we're also looking for ensuring that there's timely, trusted, and tailored advice, especially to the end users who are in marginalized areas, and in doing so, overcoming significant cultural access and stigma concerns. This same tool, uh, we are also looking at it to support patients in understanding and managing their own health status and care regime. Lastly, the area of focus is the use of the large language models to help improve interoperability of health data systems and programs, ensuring that we are strengthening the health systems. Within uh, the portal where you have made your submission, you will see you're, you're, you're supposed to pick one of these five areas, and we would encourage you to ensure that you identify which area of focus you will be um, applying to. Um, like I mentioned, this is a global call, and we have different geographical sites that we would encourage the applicants to uh, focus on. If you are an African researcher, but based in Ethiopia, Senegal, or South Africa, we encourage you to apply through the corresponding country-specific grant challenges portal. If you are based in Brazil and India, there are also similar portals within Grand Challenges Brazil and GC India portal. For the African innovators who are not based in Ethiopia, Senegal, or South Africa, we encourage you to apply through the Grand Challenges Africa portal. Um, some are also eligible to apply uh, for those who are in Pasture Network sites located in Africa. They should apply through the Grand Challenges Africa and Pasture Network sites located in Brazil, uh, through the Grand Challenges Brazil. All other eligible Pasture Network sites not located in Africa or Brazil should apply through the Grand Challenges Senegal portal. Priority will be given to this list of proposals. One, 
we want to ensure that in your application, you have an explicit request for an AI supported project that will be done in Africa. These projects have already, should have already completed a pilot before the grand challenges call. Uh, additionally, the project should have some lessons or tools that can be transferred to other use, use cases, situation, context with minimal change. Emphasis will be on the importance of community-specific, culturally appropriate, and representative AI case situations. I will now go into the eligibility criteria as well as the evaluation. For the eligibility criteria, as mentioned, we are looking for proposals that will be clear in terms of the large scale language models. And we have listed some of them there, chat GPT, uh, loud, uh, LLN, AMA, and there are other credible sources. As said, you as the applicant, you would need to ensure that whether it is an open source or a non-open source, it has an equal equivalent capability to address the various global health challenges in the relevant geographical area. Proposals that show the recipient has a good understanding of the demand and uh, have conducted preliminary stakeholder analysis uh, will, will, will be eligible. And you need to also ensure that you have established a plan for engagement, especially with the local uh, decision makers uh, in the area, geographical area that you will be working in to ensure that the success of the project. These proposals should also leverage on the impact and ensure that there, there is possibility for expansion or use in the various sectors that um, or applicability in the various sectors of global health. Proposals that outline a clear achievable and replicable methodologies will also be key. We also look for uh, proposals that will provide rapid access to data and allow the various decision makers to devote time and interest to the use of AI. Next, we will focus on proposals that explain the project and how it can generate short-term impact and how these benefits will last beyond the life of the project. The proposals also need to be driven by a shared commitment to open science data sharing and a creation of an infrastructure for collaboration and analysis. We'll be looking for the various applicants to ensure that they publish and they share these uh, outcomes in an open, uh, open data sharing platform. We are particularly uh, keen to encourage applications from women-led organizations uh, and applications for women-led projects. Proposals that will not be considered for funding are those ones that do not explicitly use or refer to the large scale language models during the execution. And also those ones that do not provide timely access to necessary data or generate any engagement and interest from the decision maker. Uh, will also not be keen to support proposals that do not demonstrate majority of the proposed work will be carried out by researchers and teams based in the relevant geographical area mentioned uh, previously. So, for example, for GC Africa, we are very keen on proposals that will ensure that they fit in within um, the African region. Proposals that do not have a validation plan or put into account any issue of scalability and sustainability will also not be considered. In terms of budget, the grant level for this uh, grant is 100,000 uh, USD for each project, um, up to a maximum of that. And we're looking for organizations that will use up uh, this uh, funding for a term of 12 months. For GC Africa, we're looking to fund 18 innovators uh, for this at 100,000 USD. Global partners may be included 
but the proposal must demonstrate at least 80% of the funding is going to an organization within Africa. Application budget should be commensurate to the scope of work proposed. When you look at the budget details, uh, the various categories that we want you to highlight, the personnel costs, the travel costs, the materials and consumables, various equipments that you may need, uh, subcontracts. No awardee is permitted to take in subgrants, but all awardees will be permitted to contract for services up to a maximum of 20,000 USD. Other research costs, such as uh, specific to the program that are not part of the other budget code categories could also be indicated and they should be specific and direct to the award. Institutional administrative costs, direct and indirect, um, can also be included but should be limited to 15% of the direct award costs. And we have a link there for the various, uh, for SFAs, funding resources as uh, highlighting the budget guidelines uh, for this call. Some of the frequently asked questions that we've received, we know that there is a lot of uh, interest for this call and we wanted to highlight some of them. One was who is eligible to apply? For GCA Africa, as I alluded to, uh, African in investigators working in Africa such as domestic organizations, and this could include nonprofit organizations, international organizations, government agencies, um, researchers, academic institutions are, are eligible to apply. This call is open to both profit and not for profit making organizations. Uh, what are the criteria for selection? We will be looking at two aspects. We want to see the challenge responsiveness. We want to see, does the proposal that you submit address the problems described in the challenge? We'll also be assessing it through an innovative lens. And we want to see, does your idea offer an unconventional or creative approach to the problem? Does it demonstrate that the application of a new or pioneering approach? Does the proposal describe the pro how the project varies from the current approaches that are existing or offer new premises or hypotheses to test? And does it provide a rational basis for expecting success? The other question that we have been seeing is once the call is closed, can I submit my idea? No, we are very keen on the deadline, 7th of November at 5 p.m. East African time, we can only accept ideas during the open round. Any proposal submitted by email or otherwise will not be reviewed. You can see if a current round is open by visiting our website. Can I submit multiple pro proposals for the same challenge? Only one proposal can be submitted per applicant. So please submit your best idea. What if I forget my password? Um, if you do this, uh, click on the I forgot my password link on the SFA Agasake online application system and you will be asked a security question. You will be supplied uh, when you first create, you'll be, um, you will be asked a security question which you supplied when you first created your account. When you answer when you answer the question correctly, a temporary password will be emailed to you, and you can be able to sign in with this password, then create a new one. We've also had some questions on applicants who have already pre-submitted, uh, who have already submitted the application and would like to recall the application. For that, uh, we urge you that you write again to um, Grand Challenges Africa team, and we would be able to. Uh, send you back details of how you can log in to your application. But this should be done before 7th of November. And that is it for the presentation. So for now, we'll open up uh, for some question and answers um, for, this, for this session. Thank you. Good afternoon, good morning, depending on your geographical location. Happy to have you on the webinar. My name is Susan Bishoga. I work with Doris and her team. Uh, as the acting support program support manager, and I will lead you in the next se se session 
of question and answers. And thank you so much for typing in your questions, which we shall, we hopefully shall uh, be able to cover in this session. Um, in addition to the technical questions that I have seen on the chat box, please do ask questions also concerning the user, user um, friendliness and also any technical questions on the on the on your portal on the application process in the other second portal, which is the advanced management system. And we'll be able to take all this and more uh, within the few minutes remaining. Uh, we will be also working to put down the to put down the the PPT the PowerPoint so that you can see our, our pieces properly. So I will give some uh, some uh, what some time for people to raise to, to unmute their mics and uh, ask the questions verbally, and then I will also read from the from the chat box so the Doris and her team can respond. So please, uh, Mr. Ebenezer Ajay, I uh, will urge you to unmute and ask your question on the scale up and sustainability verbally as I read uh, the question from uh, Suzanne Staples. Doris, is there a limit on how many proposals an organization can submit? I think you want some time, but it's good to rewind. Yes. So again, can I submit multiple proposals for the same challenge? You can only submit one proposal uh, per applicant. So please submit your best idea. Okay, I hope that is clear. Mr. Ajay, can you unmute, please? Mr. Sileshi Zaleka, please keep your questions very concise so that we can we can okay. one time all the questions. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, Hello. Mr. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for uh, the clarification of uh, the call. Uh, my uh, question is about uh, uh, is there any uh, uh, curriculum detail of uh, the 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 partners uh, should be uh, included in the proposal or uh, uh, it can be anyone uh, who is interested in doing the research and contributions to, to the call? If you understand clearly what uh, I say. So the, is the question about your curriculum vitae or the collaborators? Uh, also mine and uh, probably I will be the PI and uh, the collaborators. So uh, we are planning to, to be uh, a group in our organization. So the, the CV of uh, there should be specific or it can be anyone. It should be specific. Um, we we need you to attach uh, some evidences uh, in terms of your experience. As you see from the from the uh, the circuit portal, uh, once you indicate that your area of specialization is in AI, artificial intelligence, and machine learning, or data um, in data sharing or global health, we will want to ensure that there is a partnership that you have. Uh, within your team that will be doing this work. And so the CV should highlight some of those um, aspects. Who would be tackling the global health aspect? Who would be tackling the AI? Um, if you have both expertise, um, we'd also be keen to see that as we review. Okay. Thank you, Doris. So uh, I will take some uh, associated or uh, questions about investigators. Doris, there's a question here. Um, please define investigators. And um, also, the, a second part of that question is, can a core investigator be on two different applications? <laughs> An investigator from the word itself is a person who will be investigating, in this case, the innovator applicant uh, that will be submitting the application. Um, so the investigator is also the same as the applicant and the same as, um, in our case, the innovator that, that will be working on this. Um, yes, I believe you can be a core investigator in, in more than one application. However, you should be a PI, which is a principal investigator in only one. Yes. 
so that's clear. So um, the system will block you if you are if you attempt to submit to applications as a principal investigator. But if you're a core PI or different um, application, that, that is okay. The system will not flag you if you will be able to submit. So, um, Julianne Wong, please ask your question as succinctly as possible. Thank you. Yes, hi. Um, how do you how do you define a, a large scale language model that's a credible source with the equivalent capabilities? Uh, will the grant support developing like a more data efficient, energy efficient, and cost effective AI system that's African led and African owned? Um, Moses, um, just checking if Moses is on the call. Now, can we cycle back to that question? Um, sorry, or... sorry, I'm here now. I was I was trying to look for or um, that mute button. Okay, so thanks again uh, for that question. Uh, so of course, um, there are many different types of uh, large language models. The idea here, what we're looking for is a large language model that can give us impact on global health. Okay, now the indicative large language model that we have put in the application is actually chat gpt but um you know whether we are looking at models that have uh, you know massive uh, body um, uh, trained data or even those ones that do not have uh, any uh, specific training data um, we will we will definitely accept those um whether or not they are just focusing on uh, uh, text or they are focusing on uh, images, um, those should be okay. We know that most databases um, uh, in terms of ownership uh, may or may not be on the African continent. If there is uh, you know, um, such a model that is there on the African continent, we'll be more than happy to actually support it. Um, but otherwise, uh, um, if you're just looking for a default large language model mm -hmm. and you probably don't have one of your own, then uh, chat GPT would also do. So I think that's that's how I would answer that question. Uh, thanks. I, I hope I've answered your question. Back to you, Doris. Thank you. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you. I hope Julian, you answered. Um, um, I think so. It sounds like that uh, if we were uh, eventually trying to uh, develop a more data efficient, energy efficient, cost effective AI system that's not chat GPT um, by a team that's African led, then um, that would be acceptable for this grant. Yes, absolutely that's correct. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Julian. Uh, I'll read one now from uh, another perspective. There is, mm -hmm. for the budget, do we have to use the template from SAP or can it just be a guideline? Ah, we have to use the budget template from SFA. I think for um, the template has already been customized in terms of the various aspects that I highlighted during the breakdown. And we would want to ensure that those uh, aspects, uh, categories are actually indicated. So please use the budget template that is already uh, shared by SFA. Thank you. Thank you. And also just one, another short one. Mm -hmm. you, mentioned we have, you mentioned we have an existing project ongoing. Must we have applied an AI uh, slash ML before the call? That's from Seu Tawiwa. Probably, um, Tawiwa, you are, I see your hand is up. If you wanted to ask the same question, or please ask very succinctly before we go to Tony. Tony will be next. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Well, essentially, you, you said before that uh, you we must have a, an existing project 
that is funded. So my question was really to say, I've got a large data set, I've studied learning analytics, but I haven't applied the dedicated model. And the product is to figure out which one would be the most adequate and then implement that, that fit. Okay. Um, from my presentation, we I presented that you should have gone through a sort of proof of concept uh, stage. So we do not really want an application that is very raw in terms of ideas. Um, so that is what I meant by that. However, from your question, you are uh, looking at funding aspects. You may not have been funded previously, but if you have uh, proved that the, the large language model that you would be using has capability to address this call, then you can go ahead and make an application. So okay. I maybe I should just proceed to the proof of concept before I apply, but we've done it already more with BI, business intelligence, not really machine learning model, but I know it's applicable. Okay, thank you. Again, I'm checking my sound just to make sure you can hear me. Can you? Yes, you can. Yeah. Great. Um, so my background is in EdTech. I run an EdTech company called Kitabu. We were one of those funded by the Gates Foundation earlier for an education engagement that we've done over the last couple of months. Uh, we have been approached by four, no less, uh, health solution providers who are mostly working with frontline workers. They would like us to help them implement some of the projects that they were doing previously without the addition of AI. And they would like us to help us implement that with them. So two questions. Number one, is it possible for us to do that with four different organizations? Because we recognize that we'll be applying to the same thing with four different, um, uh, I think you called them, what did you call them? Oh, well, organization, there's a word you use that starts with C, I've forgotten. And then the second one is uh, our expertise is in education. So they haven't done a pilot particularly in the AI space. So we would be then leveraging on our expertise with teachers and students. And we've done quite a number of them over the last six months to enable them to also work with their frontline workers. Does that apply? So those are two separate questions, hoping you can answer them both. Thank you. So the first the first question, if I understood you right, uh, it's in health and uh, there are four organizations that would want to make separate applications. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So do we encourage uh, for organization, it it feels like if there will be different principal investigators, uh, then go ahead. Yes, yes, there will be different investigators. We're just their implementing partner for all four of them. So that, is that is that all right? Yes. So you would be a co PI in all the four. That is correct. Yeah. Okay, that is okay. That is that is possible. Then the other, uh, the second question you asked is in terms of education. Um, you're doing an AI project in in education, and it has um, applicability when it comes to the use of frontline health workers. That is correct. So is that is our expertise um, viable when applying for frontline worker solutions uh, for these organizations? So within the four, five areas of focus that I highlighted, um, that is applicable because that is one of the areas that we want to support them on. Um, and it, the more, uh, the fact that you have some education um, background uh, or teams that uh, you can leverage the data sets from, uh, I think it gives you your project of, uh, or application of, uh, a good case. Okay. Sorry, uh, ask again, Doris. No, you you just unmuted me. So, <laughs> oh no 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 no. Um, I'm okay. Thanks. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, Tony, for that question. Yes. So probably Doris, I could also add to for Tony that you could also, as the implementing organization, you could also apply and uh, include your four collaborators. Your four the other four institutions as collaborators. Probably we'll check the application form to see the maximum number you can apply. But in addition to what, to the other method that are going to confirm for you. So, oh, any question? Sorry, sorry. I spoke over you, but I hope you're fine. 
Hi, thanks for, thanks for letting me ask it. So I did type in a question, but as I'm listening, the question's becoming a little bit more complex. So the question that I typed in was really around whether or not we could have a sub-recipient. And as I'm hearing every, you know, you speak and other, other people speak, they're asking about collaborators. And obviously collaborators are going to be in different organizations often, which means that you do need to have sub-recipients um, or are you wanting us to bring people, those organizations in on a consulting basis? so that they paid a consulting fee. Is it just about how the money's handled? It just seemed in one of the slides, you said something about no sub-recipients um, and that you could only have contracts of up to 20,000 US dollars. It was on that, that budget slide. Thanks. Question is, can, can you have sub-grantee? Sub Jenny, what the, the exact question is, can you have a sub award or yeah it looked like on on your one slide and i don't have the slide in front of me but on the one budget slide it looked like it said no sub recipients mm -hmm. which doesn't make sense if we're working together as collaborators from different organizations because you'd have a prime organization that the pi works at and then oh. you'd have your collaborating partners that you'd subcontract in as sub recipients to be able to be paid for the work that they do on the project. So that's, maybe I misread that line on the slide, um, I, but I, I clarify. I get what you mean um, now. So we do not, um, so you can have a sub recipient um, as a fellow collaborator with you uh, within the project. However, there are some uh, applicants that would uh, you would find they apply for this grant, but they they would they would have a sub award uh, as well. So somebody else uh, taking up like eighty percent of the funding. So they end up being like a funnel uh, for, for um, this research, and that is what we are saying uh, should not take okay, place. Okay, I understand. I understand. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, there's also a, a, um, a question here about the, the grants management system. The portal already has pre-populated list of organizations. When a new one is typed, there's an alert that the Sons for Africa Foundation should first verify the organization. Can you say something about this verification process? So yes, this is on our side. Um, most of the institutions are actually in our system. But because we are uh, growing the, the list as we go, and especially for for profit organizations, please um, you you can actually send an um, an email to the GC at sansforafrica.foundation and, and and ask us to to validate your organization. But on a routine basis, we actually do that. And thank you for bringing this up. So we will take um, the two hands that are up. Prince Ajay and uh, Zain Zaika Salon in that order. Let's go ahead, Mr. Ajay. Okay, thanks for the uh, awesome session. It's really helpful. So I have a couple of questions, right? So uh, I'm just wondering, so can we, are we able to use uh, like different large language models? Because, uh, so I am looking specifically to your, whether the application uh, uses, uh, I know it's at least one, and obviously you're gonna be checking for whether it's applicable to the actual project that we propose in regards, that's really important, right? Because it's, it has to be relevant to the, to the context of what uh, project you're proposing. So is it fine that we use uh, more than one uh, large language model, uh, yeah, that's my first question for now. I think um, for the, the number of large language models that you can use, we would urge that you have at least one so that we can be able to see um, uh, how, how effective it is working out. Because like I mentioned, this will be for a period of 12 months. So the more large language models you take up um, uh, when it comes to uh, evaluation at the end, uh, maybe the question would be, were you able to see um, the, the effective use of all of those that you pick? Uh, so we'd urge that you stick to one, um, but it, it, it is at the discretion of the applicant to, to note that. 
uh, there are several open and non-open sources. So even in the selection, it is up to the applicant to pick. Okay, I'm asking the question. Thanks so much for the answer. So I'm asking the question because uh, I'm sure, as we know, like uh, beforehand, so in the proposal, we can say like uh, which uh, large language model we are thinking of using. But as we know, uh, we wouldn't know beforehand like which one would, perf would be performing the best as would uh, even standard uh, machine learning algorithms. So obviously, we would need to uh, like, you know, like experiment to see which one is best. Uh, but I guess like... Uh, just like uh, an upfront, so in the proposal, we can mention like which one. So based on uh, theoretical knowledge, I guess, probably from reading the papers and like other studies, we can uh, gauge like which one to use. But I, I guess like uh, we could experiment during the process of doing it so that uh, uh, we get the best one, I guess, right? Uh, and then that speaks to another aspect. So uh, in terms of the proof of concept, are you looking like for proof of concept as in actual implementation or like... Uh, even though it may not be implemented, uh, if we could have like a prototype, like probably do an actual, um, like a pre-task uh, of what we're trying to do, but like at a smaller scale, and then we probably give you like a GitHub link to show that we actually tried it, and would that also count as a proof of concept? To start with the latter uh, question, yes, it would. Um, and again, we would urge for you as, as you select, because as, this technology is very fast uh, evolving. You find that some someone would pick chat GPT uh, during the application, but as they, as they start doing the work, they decide to use another large, large uh, LLM. So we would urge that you pick uh, your best uh, large language model that you would want to use earlier on. Uh, in case that happens that you would want to change, um, it is also possible. Uh, it would in entail uh, for us to have a conversation and uh, to ensure that we understand why there's, there's a need for, for that change. But we, we would be open to that as well. Okay. And then also, are you looking like for at the end of this, uh, at the end of the project, like after the 12 months, uh, would you like? Uh, would it be ideal that we actually deploy it, like for example, into a hospital setting, like a like um like a product, like a probably like a pilot uh, pilot project? Would that be uh, like good? Uh, is is something that you're looking for, like the actual? Uh, so basically, to go from uh, the entire process, right? So like obviously, we need to get the data and then uh, create the model using the at least one large, large language model. And then we if we get to the point of actually creating a uh, like an interface or an AI system and then actually deploying it, are you looking for that as well? Yes. So one of the highlighted eligibility criteria is on scalability and sustainability of the of the application that you submit. So we would be very keen to see how you indicate that you would uh, be able to scale out and and sustain this this project um, in in its use. Um, additionally, we would also hope that uh, we would get um, some additional funding for those projects that actually transition and move from the proof of concept, um, and we would support them to the next uh, level. Okay. Okay. Can I have a last question? <laughs> Uh, Zakia, can we come back to you, please? Because we only have eight more minutes remaining, and I just need to check. Okay, uh, okay. Okay, connect. thanks so much. I, I might come back to you, so don't go far. Okay, <laughs> thank you so much. So, Mr. J, looks like you and you have completely refused to cooperate. Um, in the meantime, Doris Faith Kuzeko asks, are our ideas protected throughout this process, or do we need to be copyrighted before submission. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Moses, let me throw that back to Moses or Susan, even yourself. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, we have a very strict uh, data protection and privacy policy, uh, Faith. We will not be using your ideas, we will not be transferring them or even processing them beyond processing them uh, for the competition of the award. And if you do not make it, we will not um, a, a sell your ideas to any other uh, uh, bidder or, um, or applicant. So your ideas remain your ideas, ideally. So have confidence 
as you take the uh, as you create your portal and submit your ideas that you are protected on our site um, from start to finish and we, we, the, at the moment you want to erase your application or even recall it uh, in case you do not make it for the final cut but uh, fingers crossed that you'll make it you, you can always ask us to do that and we will uh, do that from our end because of the gdp rights to erasure so please on um, that's that, that you do not need to copyright it <laughs> in that case thank you go ahead zaki we go can hear you oh okay okay thanks okay so uh, uh besides the cv uh what other supporting documents are required and also, uh, should we specify in the proposal uh, any potential publications uh, that would stem from uh, from our project that we foresee? And then, uh, would the budget also cover for like uh, the uh, the APC, like uh, the APC costs for journals and stuff? I want to give that question to, <laughs> to Susan in yes. terms of the collaborated CV. Yes. So uh, let me start with the last one first. So the uh, article processing costs. Please do not budget for that. We will uh, we will have a mechanism um, at the end of the award on how that will be managed. So for all the direct costs, please uh, do not include uh, publications until further notice. And then um, your question was about the number of the, the CV. Do you what other aside from the CV from the collaborator? What other documents do you need? Yeah. So just follow the the fields on the application form. Uh, there, I think there are only four fields in, the, in that section. Don't don't go beyond that. So I, I don't think this we did it much from the collaborator. But um, should you move to the next uh, review stage, then probably we may quiz you on on other details. But for this application, whatever is in the application form is. So so how long should the CVP? Is it uh, does it matter? And also. Uh, since you're saying that the publication costs, would you let us know in the end? So, if you, I was just thinking, uh, if you want to write and uh, submit papers along the twelve-month uh, time span, then uh, should we, uh, like, wait to the end and then, uh, then, then submit to the journals, or like, how would it work? To the end of the award process, no, not to the end of your grant uh, life. So once we, we are, when we are giving you the award uh, letter, we will specify how how the budget will be managed in that sense. If you have summer papers, for example, in year one, then that that will be on our side to cater for that on the SFA side, not not, not through your budget. Okay, we have two more minutes, and I see more hands. <laughs> Yes, so the only hand that is, there are two hands that are new. Um, so there's uh, Mustafa, I saw your hand first, and then Zoleka. And in the next two minutes, probably. Okay, my, my question mostly is on the proof of concept. Should the organization have done or have done a pilot phase that involves the actual deployment of the product, of the AI system? So from, from the eligibility criteria that I highlighted, uh, we would like you to have done a pilot of that. Uh, we would not want you to uh, do it after we have already funded you, only to tell us it's not working. So at least indicate that, that in your feasibility uh, study or in your design, proposal design, that uh, this has been tested uh, or... or uh, Dry, a dry run has been done for that at, or on this or, or on that. So a pilot study would, would give your application a, a, a stronger case. Okay, Zoleka, please. Hello, everyone. Uh, so this is Zoleka from Grand Challenges, South Africa. I just actually just wanted to add the, I think there was a question in the chat about um the the budget whether the budget available will be shared amongst the 18 um african innovators i just wanted to add that from grand challenges africa is looking to fund about 18 um 18 projects there will be from south africa side we are looking to fund an additional minimum of six um applications at up to a hundred thousand um 
US dollars per project. So those applicants that are based in South Africa that apply through the Grand Challenges South Africa Hotel. I just want to clarify there is additional budget um, for that. Thank you very much to the SFA um, colleagues. Thank Good you luck much. to everybody. <laughs> Thank you very much, Zoleka. And we'll be sharing uh, the details of your call as well, the link and the contact person with, with these applicants so that they can also reach out if they are planning to apply from South Africa. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so um, we encourage you to please keep connecting with us until the call ends at um, on 7th of November, 5 p.m. PAT through GC Africa. GC Africa uh, at Science. Science for Africa. Africa Foundation. I think that has been put in the chat um, and we will promptly respond to your questions. So this recording and uh, PPT will be shared as well um, on the website. Uh, handing back to you, Doris. Uh, sorry for the hands that didn't make it um, to ask questions from in plenary, but please engage through the, the, the email address provided. Thank you. Thank you very much, Susan, and also thank you to the team behind the scenes that has made this possible. I also want to thank you, various applicants. We know that this uh, call has uh, brought in a lot of excitement from the African continent in terms of uh, uh, the questions and the vibrant engagement that we've had with you all here. So we would want to ensure that we continue addressing your questions for the next two weeks, as Susan has mentioned. Um, any question or issues that you may have, please feel free to reach out uh, to us and also keep it uh, locked on our social medias and the web pages so that we can, uh, you can also see some more of the exciting uh, grads that we have coming up um, shortly. Thank you and have a good rest of your day.